the first chapter is said that's being formulated for those, maybe like our spiritual guides here at the center, that are clearly, they know that their life is clearly in service of this, of this sacredness, sacred space. The second chapter is for those, that means of the first chapter, they, they speak of the truth, they give us different ways that we can cultivate that intimacy with the uh, inner, inner space within, the inner clarity, the essence. The second chapter is a little bit more um, for those like uh, me that get it sometime and then lose it for a long time. Then get it again a little bit, then lose it for a long time. <laughs> and so and so it's really it's called the the, um, the practice, the, the, the chapter that give us a practice, a methodology, and present different methodology, as I mentioned, that may, may suit us better. So there is a lot of gift in this work. Of, uh, of the Yoga Sutras. And the, first cha the second chapter is the one that we usually we, we study the most because it contains the Astanga Yogas, yeah? the eight limbs of yoga, or the eight facet of uh, what to do and how to do it kind of things, how to do it, how, to, how can we cultivate and maintain the state of yoga. It's also presented on the first chapter but in the second chapter, it's really broken down in a way that makes a lot of sense. Then on the third chapter, it's a little bit more talking, it's, it's more presentation of how we are living with uh, deeper practice of meditation and how they affect us and the transformation of that. And then the fourth chapter is how do we live in the state of serenity or the state of enlightenment or liberation. So the last two, we don't study that much, but the first two, the first one we look through, the second one chapter, the second chapter, we study it much more because for people that live a normal life, that goes to work and have families and live in everyday life, we're not even supported by a Sangha, like we're not in, we are a monastic, family where we are held in a certain way. For some of us, um, in our so-called normal everyday life, the second chapter is really worthy of uh, reading, finding commentaries. Now we have a lot of commentaries. We didn't have it 30 years ago, 40 years ago, but now we do. And uh, some of them, see, since mostly of us are female here also, it, some of us are a little less, uh, you know, our commentary now that become a little softer. You see, a lot of the commentary were translated in English by, in English or in German, by uh, militaries that were part of the, the met those yogis. Anyway, this is another story. But uh, yes, a lot of the translation obviously were men, which blessed be, but right now, uh, I'm really delighted to say that we have translation of the Yoga Sutras that are a little bit more closer to who we have become. And so many of us carrying the teaching of yoga are women. And many of us carrying the teaching of yoga are women in everyday life. We are not in a monastic or, 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 or in a forest or in a cave. You see, the teaching of yoga were done, a share in the forest. And they were chanted, like I chanted, which I chanted now. And then there would be some commentary by the teacher of the moment, and usually we're a very small group of men. And it will always be, the commentary will always be alive with the need of people in front of 
that with the need of people that were present. And that's the beauty about the teaching. And that's the beauty why of the beauty of learning them in Sanskrit for those of you that might enjoy that. It is a practice in itself, going back to Om, going back to the good news, that the sound itself vibrates with the truth within us. So in the classic tradition with the Yoga Sutras is, first you memorize them. Then, when you have memorized them, there is some commentaries. And the commentaries usually are in relationship to the, the teacher that already knows you. And so then the commentary has meaning for you. Isn't that beautiful? The, the main teachings remain the truth that we carry with the chanting, the, the sutras, the, always in Sanskrit, carry the same vibration, but the commentary may vary. Isn't that interesting? Because they are not dogma. They are alive and they are in service to help the individual, to give a hand to the individual that is present in the moment. I find that fantastic. <laughs>